Now, time for our rice. Very important here. First, you're gonna get one and a half cups or 286 grams of aged basmati rice. Please listen. Don't just go and just pick some random basmati rice. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> no, do not do that. After posting my video of Epicurious's biryani, Joshua Wiseman posted his version of making it at home. And I was thinking to myself, as soon as I saw that, we have to review that video. So today we're gonna do just that. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many, many years and I have plenty of other videos on my YouTube channel as well as my cookery course if you'd like to learn a little more about basic cookery. If you are returning to my channel guys and you haven't subscribed yet, then please consider subscribing, sharing and giving the video a like if you do like it. But if you wanna help the channel out even more, then be sure to check out my different levels on Patreon or my channel membership. So, onto the video. Okay, so today we are making biryani. If you've never had it before, you're in for a freaking treat, buddy. It's rich, it's salty, it's got meat, so many textures, and it's so fragrant. You might as well sprout wings and fly off into the clouds. You're like, Ugh. That could be you eating this. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? Right, so there's about a billion different kinds of biryani. Maybe not a billion, but this is the one that many people imagine. And it's called Hyderabadi mm. Biryani. It's also one of Papa's. You can make biryani an easier dish, but it can be quite complicated. And I have a feeling that this is gonna be complicated. Despite the number of ingredients, it's actually pretty easy. First, we're making our own biryani masala powder. Don't be a little baby, okay? Make your own. First, get a small sheet tray. Add a quarter cup or 21 grams of coriander seeds. Two tablespoons or 13 grams of shad jeera, which is just black cumin seed, two teaspoons or four grams of cloves, 10 green cardamom pods, two black cardamom pods, two star anise. I need to take a breath here. <laughs> two teaspoons or five grams of fennel seeds, one teaspoon or four grams of black peppercorns, and three cinnamon sticks. Pop that into an oven that's been preheated to 350 Fahrenheit for about five to seven minutes or until toasted and fragrant depending on the spices, right? Because obviously you're gonna be having to buy a lot of spices to make this. You need to make sure that you get the correct spices. Let's take cinnamon for an example. Cassia cinnamon is one of the most common that you see at the store. It's the cheaper cinnamon. It's the thicker one that you see, a very thick bark. That's cassia. The other one is called Ceylon cinnamon. Now Ceylon is normally called true cinnamon. It's a little more expensive, but it has a sweeter taste to it. It's much more delicate as well. And I'm not gonna talk about the benefits or the toxicity of cassia cinnamon. You can Google that for yourself, but it's just good to know what you're buying. The same thing with like star anise. Are you buying Chinese star anise? Or is it really Japanese star anise, which is not as healthy for you. Sure, you can pop this right into your blender, but you're gonna eviscerate it. Instead, I recommend lightly crushing that either in a mortar and pestle, or you can put it in a bag and hit it with a pan or something, I don't know. Just break it down. Now pop that into your blender, followed by one bay leaf, half a teaspoon, which is slightly under a gram of fresh ground nutmeg. Fully agree. Anytime that you're adding any very hard spices to your blender, it's a good idea to crush them, make it smaller, make it easier for your blender to be able to break up because otherwise you can chip the blade. Then again, if you're using a thermal mix, which is what we typically use in the kitchen. They're very expensive, but they get the job done. You can literally use them for just about everything. Um, they're great to use. And if anybody is watching from Thermomix, I would love a sponsorship, just to let you guys know. One teaspoon or three grams of ground mace. Blend on high until as smooth as possible. Does anyone notice that Joshua has like tape or electrician's tape on his mixer? Then sift through a strainer to get it as fine as possible. Done. Moving on to our dahi chutney. Mm. I mean, come on, look at this thing. It's more vibrant green than beautiful flatter. Again, <sighs> blender. Rough chop three green chilies. Thai chilies totally work here. Pop those into your blender, followed by a one inch knob of ginger. Rough chopped, four cloves of garlic, one cup or 11 grams of cilantro, third mm. cup or four grams of fresh mint. By the way, don't do any of that dried Okay, just throw it out the window. A pinch of shot masala powder. The fresh herbs make a difference. And finally, three quarters of a cup or 180 grams of a nice thick yogurt. Blend on high, still relatively smooth, pour into a bowl, and add additional salt to taste if needed. It's something beautiful right there. I'm just thinking to myself, but I need to see if Jamie Oliver made a video on making this at home. And I do like Jamie, but knowing him in the past few videos that we've reviewed with curries, he loves to add chutney to everything as a base, not just add it as a condiment, but like add it as a base. Right, tough. very easy. Medium bowl, add three quarters of a cup or 180 grams of plain yogurt. By the way, this is all full fat. I don't know. In the last video that we reviewed, only one out of the three made it. So if you haven't seen that video, guys, you should go see it. I don't want any of that low fat stuff, please. Two tablespoons, which is about a gram of chopped fresh cilantro, half a teaspoon or one gram of ground cumin, a quarter teaspoon or half a gram of ground coriander, and half a cup or 66 grams of a seedless English cucumber that's been grated and lightly salted and drained of its excess water. That's optional, but I like to do it. This is a good little trick. If you want to get the excess water out of the cucumber, you can do what Joshua did. If you're gonna be using it the same day, okay, it's not necessary, but if you're gonna leave it in the fridge for a day or two, 
it could be a good option. Season to taste with salt, give it a nice mix, so combine, and then finally fold in two tablespoons or 21 grams of diced red onion and lemon juice to taste for flavor and consistency. Now, listen, the consistency of this really depends on the type of yogurt that you use. The thicker the yogurt, the thicker the raita. See where I'm going here? Now we're ready to make. First, we marinate our chicken. Now, large bowl. You're gonna need one powder of 450 grams of chicken. And this is good. Joshua's using chicken legs. Chicken legs or dark meat is much better than using chicken breast. Not only do you get a lot more flavor because it's on the bone, but if you use chicken breast, it's gonna be rubbery. And unless you like rubber chicken, I suggest using chicken legs. Drumsticks, which is gonna be around four or five. Depends on how thick that chicken is. Two garlic cloves grated, a two inch piece of ginger grated, two thirds of a cup or 157 grams of yogurt, one and a half teaspoons or four grams of your biryani masala powder that you made earlier, mm. quarter teaspoon or half a gram of turmeric powder, two teaspoons or one gram of red chili powder. You can totally use paprika, that's fine. Three quarters of a teaspoon or one gram of green cardamom powder, one and a half teaspoons or nine grams of fine sea salt, two Indian green chilies, which like I said, Thai chili's totally fine. Finely chopped, two teaspoons or nine grams of lemon juice. Mix all together to coat thoroughly and optionally you can marinate over night or you can use it right away. It's up to you. I know it's a marinade, so maybe marinate it. Yeah, if you're gonna be making and going through all this effort of making the marinade, it's best to marinate it overnight or at least 12 hours, but this recipe is easily gonna be a two-day recipe right now. So about him saying that this is an easy recipe, if you plan it out, it can be, but technically it's a little more complicated to make some of these recipes. They're not all super easy. Some are, and you can make them easy, but not all. Fried onion. Seems like it doesn't belong, right? But it does. First, you're gonna need one and a half large yellow onions. Cut the top, slice it in half, and the root off. Peel, and then slice it a quarter inch or slightly thinner if possible via a mandolin. Now, look, you could do this with a knife. I really recommend a mandolin so that they fry evenly. <laughs> now, in a 12 inch saute pan, add three cups or 700 milliliters of vegetable oil. Heat over medium until it's around 325. Then add in your onions in two batches and fry, stirring occasionally until crisp, light, and golden brown. Drain on a wire rack or a paper towel. If you're gonna be slicing onions like this to make crispy onions, you definitely need to use a mandolin. Or, if you have one, I'm sure you don't, but at least, at work, a deli slicer. It makes life easier. So if you have to make these at work, use the deli slicer. Don't use a mandolin. You'll save yourself a bunch of time. And if you're at home, use a mandolin. Don't use the knife because you save yourself a bunch of time. I used to have crispy onions on my mise en place list. So I'd be there at like 7 a.m. with a cup of tea and five to 10 kilos of onions, you know, crying and everything else. But if you're making a few crispy onions, you can do it like this, it's fine. But if you're gonna be making a lot of crispy onions, you don't want to add them to the oil when the oil's hot. The onions that touch the oil first are gonna fry before the rest of the onions. My method in doing it is this. You wanna add the onions to the oil while it's still at room temperature relatively cold, and then slowly bring that temperature up until they start frying. When the sizzling starts to lessen, when there's not as many, say, bubbles in the fryer and it starts to relax a little bit, and they start developing more of a golden brown color, this is the moment that you wanna take them out and you want to put them onto, like he said, a sheet tray or a sheet tray covered with some paper towels, and you want to spread them out so they dry. If you don't spread them out, they won't dry and they won't be crispy onions, they'll be soggy onions, and you don't want that. Now, time for our rice. Very important here. First, you're gonna get one and a half cups or 286 grams of aged basmati rice. Please listen. Don't just go and just pick some random basmati rice. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> no, do not do that. Please get the properly highest quality possible, please. Like making anything, if you don't have the specific ingredient, you may have to substitute. Now, I'm not suggesting to use frika to make biryani, but as far as using aged basmati rice, any of you that are professional chefs that make biryani for a living in your restaurant, please let me know down below or let everybody else know what your opinion is on using any substitutes for say the rice or any of the other ingredients. Now, rinse your rice multiple times until the water runs clear, then let it sit soaking in water for 30 minutes, then gently drain it, being careful not to break it up. Now, medium sized pot, add in seven cups or mm. 1.7 liters of water, one black cardamom mm. pod, one star anise, one bay leaf, one cinnamon stick, five green cardamom pods, three quarters of a teaspoon or one gram of shot jira, five whole cloves, half a teaspoon or half a gram of ground mace, one tablespoon or 11 grams of fine sea salt, <laughs> and just a tiny little bit of vegetable oil, like a half teaspoon. Now, bring that to a rolling boil. Once it's boiling, I know this seems wrong, but this is how it's done. Now, add in your soaked basmati rice and let that cook until about 75% of the way done. Not all the way. You want a little bit of rawness on the inside of that grain, which is actually pretty fast. It'll happen in like two to four minutes. I'm sure that Joshua was standing right there tasting it until it was ready. If you don't cook rice a lot at home and you don't know how long it's gonna take to say parboil, it is a good idea to not walk away and do something else and forget about it. You need to stay there and check. 
because basmati especially does not take that long to cook. Now while it's going, get a small pot, add three and a half tablespoons or 52 grams of milk and half a teaspoon or much less than a gram. So you could just say a generous pinch, I suppose, of saffron. Just to add all the spices that he has added so far to the list, Devai, plus the saffron. If you have a majority of the ingredients, that's good, but um, Front threads and set that to the side. Separately, you're gonna need a thick bottom pot and an light drizzle of vegetable oil in the bottom. Add your marinated chicken along with all of your marinade. Joshua has this same Dutch oven that I have at home. If you guys don't have one, it is a little expensive to buy one, but they are worth it because if you buy one, you'll have it for the rest of your life. And I use mine daily. It cuts your cooking time down, it retains the heat. They're great pots. Overall, great pots to use. Oil in the bottom. Add your marinated chicken along with all of your marinade, everything. And I've got some different herbs for you here. We got a quarter cup or 12 grams of finely chopped mint and a third cup or 18 grams of finely chopped cilantro. That's the whole amount. Now you're gonna take that and you're gonna add three quarters of your cilantro, three quarters of your mint, drizzle in two tablespoons or 27 grams of ghee. Just clarified butter, all right, don't you worry. Three quarters of your fried onions. Gently stir that together. Now before you add the rice, make sure to taste it. If it needs more salt, salt it now. If you don't salt it now, it's not gonna be salty enough later. Trust me, not enough salt will ruin this. Tasting is very important, but I do not recommend tasting raw chicken. What you can do is when you make the marinade, to make the marinade separately and don't add all the ingredients directly to the chicken, add it separately to a bowl, mix it, taste that first, and then add it to the chicken. That way you're not going to be wondering, did I add enough salt or did I not? because there's no reason to give yourself salmonella poisoning. Then on top of that, you mm. add half your rice, half your remaining amount of cilantro, half your remaining amount of mint, your fried onions, a little bit more biryani masala, light squeeze of half a lemon, then add your second half of rice, the remainder of your mint and cilantro, the remainder of your fried onion, then ever so carefully drizzle on your saffron milk. Now, optionally, you can totally strain mm. the saffron milk first if you want, I prefer to. Anyway, drizzle that on, and finally, you really do need to season it, but you have a lot, and I mean a lot of ingredients that go into making this. And if you are going to to be adding some saffron to this. You don't need to strain it. Saffron is very expensive and it's nice to see those little threads of saffron in the meal. It's good for you. It's not going to hurt you unless you bought fake saffron. Drizzle on a quarter cup or 54 grams of melted ghee. Now there's a cooking method called dumb cooking. I know, that's what it's called. And traditionally it's done with a very basic water dough that's then rolled into a rod and then they seal the pot with that. You can totally do that and it works just fine. It's Yeah, that's the old style of basically making well, a crock pot or a pressure cooker, making a pressure cooker at home. This is the old method of doing it. It works too. Really messy. So a lot of homes nowadays will just use a layer of foil in between the lid and the pot. You close it and instead of putting this on a direct- He didn't show us. I mean, you can do aluminum. Uh, he probably threw the dough out, but in any case, if he made the dough, you might as well do it the traditional way, but oh well. Anyway. What you're gonna do is get a cast iron, heavy bottom pan, your pot fits in, set the flame to medium high, so it reaches just over the mm. diameter of the pot. Cook that for 15 minutes, then reduce the temp to low, do not take the lid off, and cook for 20 to 30 more minutes. That's it. At this point, your biryani should be done. This is one of those dishes that you're not gonna get it right the very first time unless it's a fluke, because it's very difficult to be able to cook the rice perfectly when you par cook the rice and then you add it to raw chicken and then the moisture from the chicken from the marinade in the sealed container is going to cook the rice even further for another 50 minutes or an hour. So if you don't get this recipe right the first time, don't worry. It takes a little bit of practice. Just know this. The bottom should be beautifully cooked with a light char on your chicken. Gently stir everything together, being careful not to rip up mm. your chicken, and gently take out those succulent fall off the bone pieces of chicken. Pop it on a plate beautifully. Add some additional cilantro or fried onion for garnish, which you might not have. Now, as you can tell that this chicken is a little burnt, and this is normal whenever you're cooking for an hour on basically what he made with the skillet is a flat top. It's normal because all the heat's coming from the bottom. If your chicken is a little burnt like this, then be sure to delicately take the chicken out and not to scrape the bottom of the pan because the rest will be burnt and you don't want the, or you don't want to mix the rest of that burnt um, marinade and the burnt chicken juices and everything with the rice. But like I said, this is not easy, especially if you're doing it on the flat top. So if it is a little like this, it's okay. And let's taste test and see how mm. we did. You see this? We got biryani. Feel good about it. <clears throat> mm. Oh! See, how do you eat it though? You know, you get a little mm. bit of rice, a little bit of chicken. Mm. Wow. It's clean, it's fragrant, multiple spices in your face. And it's filling. Now, a little bit of this. Oh, damn. A little bit of that. 
Ugh. Do not make this without these sauces. They're absolutely a requirement. You need more salt than you think. This could be salted a little bit better. Then just make sure that you're tasting as you go. But you know what else you should do as you go? Watch B-roll. One thing I want to say about this video is that Joshua did a very good job, but Joshua always goes above what most people do to make a recipe. He does what we normally do in the kitchen. He puts a lot of work into whatever he makes, and you can see this. And I think he got a lot more things right than the last video that we reviewed of his when he made the paella. So guys, if you do want to make this at home, feel free to do so. I'll leave the link down below and uh, you can check out his recipe as well. But just keep in mind, you're going to need a lot of ingredients to make this recipe. Hopefully you enjoyed this video guys and the recipe as well. And if you want to check out another video, then click on this one here or check out the Patreon as well that I have to see what benefits you get by joining Patreon. Until next time, take care.